Hello again everybody. So last time I did a video on my top 10 favorite 5 nights at Wario's games. Now it's time to do the exact opposite. Today I will be talking about the 10 worst 5 nights at Wario's games ever. Obviously. As that's literally the reason you even clicked on this video. Now let's quickly discuss some ground rules. First. All intentionally bad games will be discluded as the entire list will just be those games. Secondly, the game must have a somewhat decent following to be put on here. So no games with two followers and so on. And three, all of the games will be ranked in their most recent state. So 1.0s of games won't count. But if a game is getting a remaster I can still rank that game. Meaning I can rank Cabin Fever Chapter 2 and Cabin Fever The End separately. Demos will not count either but they never count in all of my other videos anyway. Finally this isn't a rule but something I have to say to all of you. I hate that I have to say this but this is sadly the world we live in. Do not, and I mean do not harass any of the developers who made these games. I am directly judging the work of these creators and not the creators as people. Okay are we good? Also this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow which is a Okay now let's finally begin shall we? <coughs> Cabin Fever Chapter 2 was a massive disappointment to a lot of people. Cabin Fever Chapter 1 is a decent and unique game that had a huge cliffhanger which got people really excited for the sequel. It was built up as the ultimate finale to all of Epic Taggy's Five Nights at Wario's games. And what we got was horrible. First off the gameplay is really mid. The gameplay doesn't have anything super terrible about it but there is nothing super good about it. But wanna hear what does suck? The explanation of the mechanics. This game very poorly explains how to deal with everyone so when the most complex characters are introduced on night 3 you'll have no idea what you're doing and you'll die a lot. It's basically a difficulty spike but not in difficulty but rather in just figuring things out. It also doesn't help that there is a freaking minute and a half long unskippable cutscene that plays every single time you play Night 3. Also I'm not a fan that only 3 characters can kill you in this game. The rest of the characters just build your bootleg exposure meter making this game feel more like One Night at Flumpty's 2 rather than Cabin Fever. The lore is hands down the worst part about this game though. The girl you play as in the original Cabin Fever is just dead and it has this cheesy, lame, and cliche fourth wall break where the villain is the developer of the game. That twist was honestly garbage and the game would be better off without it. But again this game isn't all bad. The atmosphere is actually really good here along with the main theme. The cage's design is also amazing. Also the cage is Luigi for those who are wondering. This game also has some pretty good bonus content in it which I'm a fan of. Cabin Fever Chapter 2 isn't a bad game for say but rather it's just a mediocre one. But hey let's look on the bright side. Epic Taggy took this game as a good lesson and he was able to heavily improve his future games. As of now he is working on a remaster of this game that is looking very promising from the demo we have and it's also stated that it will have the same amount of content as 5 shows at Wario's. So very thankfully the future of this game is looking brighter than bright. In conclusion this game suffers from poorly explained mechanics, mid gameplay, and garbage lore while still having some redeeming qualities every here and there. And that's why it's placed here on the list. I sure love Five Nights at Wario's too so I hope someone makes a good remake of it. Five Nights at Wario's 2 Outcast Edition is a pretty bad game. It reuses a lot of assets from the original game but it also reuses lots of assets from Five Nights at Wario's rebooted 2 out of all games. The generator is in the cameras and it is extremely slow here. It removes the entire fear of having to constantly balance out the spirits and the quickly draining generator. We are already off to a bad start. The gameplay here is extremely bland and unoriginal. Yoshi and Luigi work the same as Wario, Waluigi, and Peach from the original game but the whole entire temptation of touching the generator is completely gone. Ashley just appears in the back if you're there for too long but you are probably never going to die to her once in this game. Sonic is just Toad but without the lightning mechanic taking away the whole fear of missing your chance to check on him. And finally Kirby is Bowser but now you need to use the toolbar to push him back when you're in the back room. Also the toolbar from Five Nights at Wario's 4 returns here but it only fixes the lights and stops Kirby. Also there is an option on the toolbar called Emma, 
When you click it you just get a cheap jump scare with a terribly cropped PNG of Emma. The models also look like garbage here, especially Kirby and Sonic. But I do find two things about this game actually good. First off is the cast of characters. As the name implies we get a cast with huge variety. We have Luigi, Yoshi, and Ashley which is normal but we have two newcomers. Sonic and Kirby. Sonic uses his Sonic EXE design from the popular creepypasta and Kirby uses his demon form from the anime. The lore is also interesting as it is basically a what if kinda story. Luigi didn't forgive Bruno so he met up with the already possessed Yoshi and Ashley to help him. Toad is left out to die I guess. Anyway Luigi possessed Sonic and Kirby and then he locked Bruno in WarioWare Inc. But the cons overshadow the pros sadly. But hey let's look on the bright side. Outcast is getting a massive 2.0 update which will make the game look visually better along with fixing the gameplay flaws. It will also add a new mode too. But in the end Five Nights at Wario's 2 Outcast Edition is just a worse version of Five Nights at Wario's 2 at the end of the day so I think it earned its spot here. Okay let's discuss Wario's Hotel. Ready? It's actually pretty good. That's right I actually enjoyed this one quite a bit. But this game has a side mode called Virus Mode. And it's bad enough to be ranked separately. But to be fully honest I really, really want to like this mode but I just can't. Out of all of the games on this list I have the most positives to say here but that means we are going to have a lot of negatives. Strap in as this is going to be a long one. Let's start off with the visuals. I just want to say that due to the cameras being in color the game is a lot more visually pleasing. I love any Five Nights at Wario's game that is colored cameras especially due to how rare those games are. But the models on the other hand are terrible. I get that modeling the viruses must be a nightmare but this. All of the viruses here look like absolute garbage and their terrible jump scares don't help. The gameplay here is surprisingly good for a game in this list. But it has two major flaws. Let's start with the smaller one being that nights 1 through 3 are horrible. You see for virus Wario, virus Waluigi, and virus Yoshi you need to hide outside which is basically the back room from 5 nights at Wario 2. But there is nothing else you need to keep track of so you can just stay there the entire night and win. That's right to beat nights 1, 2, and 3 you just need to click a single button to win. But you may say doesn't Bowser kill you if you're outside for too long? Well don't worry, I will get to him later. The biggest flaw is Virus Peach. She permanently disables your cameras when she is in front of the bar camera. You can get rid of her by flashing the cameras. Sounds okay right? Well no, not at all. She gives you so little time to actually stop her. So when you're waiting outside for Wario, Waluigi, or Yoshi to leave it's an instant loss. If you go back and you'll die. If you wait you'll lose your cameras then you'll die. She makes the entire mode luck based because of that. That really sucks as I actually really love the gameplay for this mode with the flaws aside. It has a lot of mechanics you need to balance and keep track of while not feeling completely overwhelming. It's really fast and fun. But let's discuss the sound design. It's okay I guess. It's just a lot of reused sounds from the official games but a lot of fan games do that so I can look over it. But there is one song in this mode that is absolutely amazing. That of course being Virus Mario's theme. Like tell me, why does a music box theme out of all themes have to go this hard? Like just listen to it. I don't know and I don't care if this theme was made for the game or not but I absolutely love it. Now despite the few flaws I mentioned this mode sounds really decent right? Well that's what I'd love to say but this mode is the most unpolished and broken piece of garbage ever made to the point where it makes Sonic 06 look extremely polished. Don't believe me? Well let's discuss some bugs shall we? Let's start off with the custom night. It literally doesn't work. Regardless of what you set the AI to it will just load you into the night you're on in the main campaign. This makes max mode impossible to do and that means getting 100% completion in this mode is physically impossible now. 
you still can access the max mode but you need to edit the game's code to do that and not many people at all have the coding knowledge to do that. Well who needs custom knights anyway right? All of the 1.0s of the original series besides Origins didn't have custom knights and yet they were super good. So who cares when you can just replay knights right? And that brings me to our next bug. The new game button doesn't even work. That's right you can't even start a freaking new game. And because the custom knight and the new game button doesn't work you are now stuck on night 7 for the rest of time and there is nothing you can do about it. There is an easter egg where if you start a new game enough times you get this secret cutscene. Let me tell you no one on earth would have ever known about this easter egg if it wasn't for this bug. I find that to be hilarious how a bug gave away a massively hidden easter egg. Also the grammar in the cutscene was probably written by a 6 year old. Just take a look at it yourself. But now let's discuss Virus Bowser. You see when you go outside Virus Bowser will start to approach your location. He is posed to prevent you from camping outside especially on the first 3 nights. But Virus Bowser is so slow that he can't reach you. That's right you could spend the whole entire night outside and he'll never reach you. Just take a look for yourself. <laughs> Also because of that getting the all jump scares achievement is now impossible due to virus Bowser's terrible coding. And that is just scratching the surface of bugs in this mode. There are many more bugs I could talk about but this section is already long enough as it is. But hey let's look on the bright side. This game is getting a major update so maybe virus mode will get fixed who knows. But in conclusion this game may have some pros it still overall suffers from bad models, RNG based gameplay, and a crap ton of bugs and exploits. And that is why this game earned its spot here on this list. Five Nights at Wario's Insurrection honestly would have been a decent game to be honest if it wasn't for the stupid balancing. This is probably the most unbalanced Five Nights at Wario's game ever made. I guess I should discuss the only really fair characters first. That of course being Wario and Waluigi. Those two kinda work like how they do in Five Nights at Wario's 2 in a way. Every death to them usually feels like your fault. But it only goes downhill from here. Let's discuss Peach now. She will have a quickly draining piano and you'll need to charge it. It's literally just a music box. On nights 2, 3 and 4 it charges quickly so it's not a problem. But in night 5 it charges so slowly. The meter literally goes down faster than it goes up now. She requires so much attention so the time for keeping track of everyone else must be used extremely sparingly. Then we have DK. He will appear in front of you and you'll have to type a number into a small keypad. Mess up or take too long you die. Sounds okay right? No. You have a slowly decreasing sanity meter and if it runs out you die. But due to how the game is designed you must take a pill just as it is about to run out. I'm talking like 3 seconds left. But if DK spawns as you're about to go you just get a cheap loss as you can't leave when he is there. You don't even need to have like 3 seconds left for a cheap kill either. If you have like 10 seconds you're screwed. 10 seconds may sound like a lot but what if I told you he literally speeds up the decreasing of the sanity meter when he is in your room. DK is very cheap but wanna hear what's more cheap. Mario and Luigi. Why? They can insta kill you whenever they want to. Whenever they are in your room you need to shoot them by clicking them. That's okay but this is where the problems start. If you miss once you die. That may not sound bad but then you realize they can spawn at any second. Meaning if you are about to click to open your cameras or to go to the back and they spawn in. You instantly die. That is the most stupid and cheap mechanic in any fan game I've ever played. The fact you can be insta killed for just trying to pull up your cameras is hot burning crap. To make matters worse nights 1 through 4 are very easy. Night 5 is just a massive difficulty spike for literally no reason. Nights are only 3 minutes and yet this game is so unbearable. Screw this game and it's god awful balancing. But hey let's look on the bright side. The atmosphere in this game is actually really good and I love the amount of creativity in this game. But in conclusion this game suffers from some of the worst balancing in any 5 nights at Freddy's fan game I've ever played. <laughs> Five Nights at Wario's rebooted is just plain bad. This game is a remake of Five Nights at Wario's 1 but it ruins basically all of the redeeming qualities about the original game. 
The visuals look extremely stretched and bad. Like just look at it yourself. Though I do love Peach's design in this game. It's really unique and she finally isn't the black sheep of the group anymore now that she is in overalls. But a single design of a character doesn't excuse the fact that this game's visuals suck. The gameplay is the worst part. Wario, Waluigi, Luigi, and Peach all work the exact same. The only different character is Mario. You see his new mechanic is garbage. You see in the bathroom camera Mario will appear every time to time. You need to turn on the music and he'll go away. It's a decent mechanic but of course there is always something that has to ruin it. You can just leave the music on all night and Mario will never attack. That's right. To stop Mario for the entire night you just need to click a button. The solution to this is painfully simple. Just make the music use a usage bar and everything would be fixed. But that's not all. You see whenever your door gets jammed in the original game it's an instant loss as they kill you when it hits 6am. But here they don't kill you and you just win the night. Just as long as you don't pull up the cameras they won't attack you. That's right to beat this entire game you just need to stop Mario by clicking the button then go AFK. You only need to click 4 times then you win. That's the entire game. At least it was only the first 3 nights that could be cheesed in virus mode but here it's the entire game. This is a huge sign of bad game design. Also I find it weird that you always lose 2 power even at usage 1. There is one decent knight in this game thankfully. That being knight 6. It's a Bruno knight but you see the game starts to play like a worse version of 5 knights at Wario's origins. I don't really have much to say about it but one thing. The images for the rooms are pictures that were taken place during the day and because of that it makes it feel like all of the nights are taking place during the day. That makes this game feel even more unpolished. Night 6 is mid. STOP! You violated the law! This game is just barely a little worse than Insurrection just due to the mindless gameplay. But hey let's look on the bright side. Luigi Aiden got way better at making games and he made a new series called The Brand New Timeline. And the game called The Brand New Timeline 2 is basically a from the ground up remake of Rebooted. And that game is actually pretty good. But in conclusion this game suffers from super stretchy graphics, ugly visuals, and extremely awful gameplay that can be super easily cheesed and that's why it earned its spot here. <laughs> Five Nights at Wario Swimming in Madness is just such a nothing game. This game's character models are pretty ugly. Wario and Waluigi look okay but everyone else looks hideous. But not in a scary way but in a bad way. Peach especially looks like garbage here. The camera's static is also annoying in this game. If you move your mouse a bit too quickly you can easily lose it in the static. This game also doesn't explain its mechanics at all so it's up to you to figure out everything yourself. But my main problem with this game is how basic the mechanics are. If a character is about to attack click a single button and they're gone. I'm not joking. You need to click the camera to stop Wario and Waluigi. You click an alarm to stop Luigi. You click a phone to stop Peach. And Mario works how he always does. But you see Mario is acceptable in other games as he is usually just a single character and everyone else has actual depth to them. You may say isn't that how all 5 Nights at Freddy's fan game characters work though. Well let's discuss the characters from one of the most underrated 5 Nights at Wario's games. 5 Nights at Wario 2. You see if this were swimming in madness clicking the back room would immediately make the character leave. But you see this game does more than that. You have to wait and guess when a character leaves. While that's happening you have the temptation of touching the generator which you need to constantly charge. But charging it when someone's in your room will lead to a jump scare. Now do you see why this game's mechanics are super bland? If there were more unique and in-depth mechanics this game would just be a lot better. There is also a side mode but due to this game not explaining the mechanics whatsoever I can't beat the first night as I don't know how to stop Wario. But hey let's look on the bright side. My somewhat friend Wario851 Studios is helping to make a 5.0 update for this game. The models seem to be looking amazing so I can't wait to see the update. Not to mention that this game is getting a sequel that is also looking extremely promising. Despite the game's current state the future is looking amazing and I can't wait to see what this series has got in store. In conclusion this game suffers from poorly explained mechanics, bad visuals, and extremely shallow mechanics. And that's why this game earned its spot here. 
Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. And I just wanted to say that Five Nights at Wario's Rebooted 2 is a very bad game and you should never play it. Five Nights at Wario's Rebooted 2 is a masterpiece and you are just plain wrong. Now that that's done, time to play my favorite Five Nights at Freddy's fan game. Five Nights in Anime. Who is there? That is weird as I do not see anyone there. Five Nights at Wario's Rebooted 2 somehow manages to be worse than the first game. The gameplay here is very lackluster. In order to stop Wario and Waluigi you need to turn on the alarm once they enter your room. They'll immediately leave. Peach is the same but now you need to click an alarm on the toolbar to make her leave. Peach's alarm uses the Metal Gear alarm which I find funny. Toad works basically the exact same as the original game. And Mario and Bowser will kill you upon staying in the back room for too long. Also just like Outcast Edition the generator is in the camera and it's very slow. All of my problems from earlier apply here. Now let's go back and tear almost every character's mechanic to shreds. Wario and Waluigi's mechanic would have been fine if it weren't for two things. First off just like the music in the first game there is absolutely no punishment for keeping the alarm on. Meaning you can just keep it on all night. I'd simply fix it by making so that the generator loses power faster when it's on and you also can't charge the generator while the alarm's on too. But then we have the second problem. And oh god it's horrible. The stupid alarm is so goddamn loud and annoying. Throughout the entire night you're basically going to have that alarm on the entire time as it is just the smartest strategy. It is so obnoxious in this game and it basically ruins a huge chunk of the game for me. Peach's mechanic is dumb. You see the phone guy somewhat explains the toolbar but not how to actually use it against your foes. So it's completely up to you to find out how to stop Peach. It's annoying but I can get over it. But things just have to get more convoluted. There is a second option on the toolbar called Mushroom that's completely useless as far as I'm aware. Due to this dumb useless option it made everything convoluted and confusing. At least in 5 nights at Wario's 4 the wake up button wasn't explained as something to use against your foes. Not only that but it did have an actual use in a cutscene so it's acceptable there. Now Mario and Bowser are probably never going to kill you. You only need to hide in the back when Toad is attacking and they can't even spawn when Toad is attacking. They also give you forever to leave once they start spawning. Their progress will also instantly reset upon leaving. They will never kill you unless you're intentionally dying to them. What a waste of a character. Or should I say characters. Luigi Aiden thought it was a good idea to waste two entire characters by putting them together and giving them the most useless mechanic. And that's just the gameplay. The possession of Richard McRoy in this game sucks. In the original game Richard would slowly get more evil as time went on. It was a slow but effective progression that didn't need any changing. But in this game Richard is extremely nice on nights 1, 2, 3 and 4. But on night 5 he suddenly turned super evil with literally no build up whatsoever. The visuals in this game are horrendous. They somehow managed to look even more stretched out than the first game. Toad especially looks like absolute crap in this game. The lighting was fine in the earlier builds. While yeah the office made it look like it takes place during the day it was still fine. But a new update came out giving the game much darker lighting. Due to that the game managed to look even worse than before. But hey let's look on the bright side. As I said before Luigi Aiden is working on the brand new timeline series which is actually a really good series so far. The brand new timeline 3 which is basically a complete from the ground up remake of 5 Nights at Wario's rebooted 2. It is looking absolutely amazing and it's been in development for about a year now. With that much time and development it's bound to be good. But in conclusion this game suffers from garbage lighting, extremely stretchy visuals, horrible character mechanics, wasted characters, horrible development of Richard McRoy, pointless mechanics, and that stupid alarm. And that's why this game earned its place here. Now we have the one you have all been waiting for. Five Nights at Wario's return to 2014 has become infamous over the years to the point where it has become a meme. This game's gameplay is basically Five Nights at Wario's 1 but horrendously bad. Wario, Waluigi, 
and Luigi all work the same except they go to opposite doors. Peach will appear in the vent and you'll need to stare at her for a stupidly long amount of time. And Mario works the same as always. The nights in this game are extremely long. A normal 5 nights at Wario's game night is 5 minutes. But in this game all of the nights are 9 minutes. That is just way too long for a night. The sound design in this game is also just reused sounds from the original game. But unlike other games where it may put some new sound effects every here and there all of this game's audio is reused from the original game besides the calls. While the gameplay is mediocre and the sound design is completely reused from the original game it's the visuals that made this game infamous. The character models to start off with are mostly stolen return to the factory models. But the edits done to them make them look horrible. Mario has this extremely awkward stretchy body for some reason. The room images that were chosen are not really that good. Literally one of the door rooms have the Getty Images logo and the game doesn't try to hide it whatsoever. Add along the bad character designs and god this game looks awful. The game also looks stretchy. While not as bad as rebooted 1 or 2 it still isn't very good. Even playing this game in the original 4x3 ratio it still looks stretched. There is a side mode called 2018 mode which is just a bland virus mode. The gameplay sucks here just like the main mode. I find it weird that one camera is in color but the rest aren't. The visuals don't look any better here too sadly. Jebushi voiced the phone guy in this mode just for the memes and that is the best part about this mode. This mode is insanely forgettable. So forgettable to the point where I forgot to rank it on my every 5 nights at Wario's side mode ranked video. But hey let's look on the bright side. This game is getting a 4.0 update and boy let me tell you it looks good. The visuals look actually really nice and the gameplay seems to be fixed. While it isn't the most insane thing ever it still looks very good. But in conclusion this game suffers from dull gameplay, completely rehashed sound design, painfully long nights, and absolutely atrocious visuals. And that's why it's placed here on this list. <laughs> Five Nights at Wario's Return to 2017 is somehow even worse than the first game. The gameplay is just even more reused mechanics that aren't even really explained by the phone guy. Wario, Waluigi, and Bowser all work the same. You just need to click Peach when she starts having anger issues. And Toad is almost the same but he moves through the cameras like a normal character. I honestly don't understand Mario in this game. Both pulling up your cameras and hiding doesn't stop him. But due to his weird coding it seems that whenever he is about to attack he can just completely restart his attack cycle for some reason. So I just played the entire game hoping Mario wouldn't attack. Yes that Mario. generator is now charged by spam clicking meaning you can always fully charge it in one session. Because of that the generator is never really a threat. There is a new mechanic where a machine will break and you need to fix it by clicking it. Take too long and you die. It's literally just Peach's mechanic but in the office. The sound design is just like the first game where literally every sound but the calls are reused from the original game. But the 6am theme sounds like it was recorded on an iPad. Richard's possession is not good here either. He is nice on nights 1, 2 and 3. Questionable on night 4 and evil on night 5 onwards. While it isn't as bad as rebooted 2 I still heavily prefer slower progress. And of course we have the visuals. They somehow managed to look even worse than the first game. Now all of the cameras are in color. I do love colored cameras but since the images were taken during the day it makes it feel like you're taking the day shift. Everyone somehow looks even worse than they did in the first game. Mario is the only character who actually looks better in the sequel due to him not having that weird stretchy body anymore. Bowser looks extremely skinny and he uses a different set of colors. He also has no blood or scars on him and with all of that combined he looks atrocious. Toad looks like something straight out of hell. He looks scary but not in a horror way but in a WTF way. It's hard to explain Toad's design but by looking at it you can get what I'm trying to say. The extras is a mess. There is this secret mini game where you can choose to save Richard McRoy by clicking one of two options. Regardless of what you pick nothing happens. There is a secret phone call you can play while Mac tonight is just chilling in the background while the call is playing. 
Finally there is this secret night that is literally just a normal night from the first game except the cameras are now in color making it look like a day shift and now the Getty Images logo says Wario's Getty Images. Sorry Justin right but by just putting Wario's name over the watermark doesn't fix it. There is also no custom night which is sad. Also the entire extras menu is unlocked from the start for some reason. The main reason I put this game lower than the first is because it has a lot less bonus content than the first. But hey let's look on the bright side. This game is getting a 3.0 update which will heavily improve the visuals and gameplay. But in conclusion this game suffers from weird bonus content, trashy gameplay, completely reused sound design, and even more atrocious visuals than the first game. And that's why this game earned its spot on this list. <laughs> Five Nights at Wario's Lost in Time is without a doubt the worst Five Nights at Wario's game ever made. All of the characters work the same. You just need to put the Five Nights at Freddy's 2 mask on and they'll leave. But there is a toxic meter that will go up and barely not reach the top when someone enters. But once the mask is on you can't take it off when someone is in your room. Multiple of characters can enter the room at a time too. Meaning if anyone enters the room while someone else is in the room it's an instant loss. There aren't even any jump scares. The gameplay is entirely luck based which is horrible. This game only has one camera too meaning this game is extremely boring whenever you're waiting to do something. There is also no ambience. Loading up the extras just crashes the game. This game was made in 5 nights at Freddy's Maker so I was easily able to remove the AI of everyone to see the rest of the game. The custom night allows you to set the AI of my favorite characters. Wario. Wall. Mario, and Lug. This game's visuals are extremely atrocious. Literally every character has one PNG they use throughout the entire game. Luigi literally uses a terribly edited Gary's mod render. You can also reveal Luigi's office pose by just turning on the flashlight. This game is is literally just stolen 5 nights at Freddy's 2 assets the game. But hey let's look on the bright side. Well. I have literally nothing good to say about this game or its future. Think about that. This game is so bad I can't even think of a single positive. In conclusion this game suffers from atrocious and boring RNG gameplay. Little to no sound. No jump scares. A crappy custom night. Extras that crash the game. And visuals straight from hell. And that's why it earned its spot as the worst 5 nights at Wario's game ever made. But there is one thing I have been purposely avoiding to say about this game. You see, when you start a new game, you are well, greeted to this. <laughs> Barbecue bacon burger. I'm SpongeBob. Oh, no! Well that's a wrap everyone. I'm sorry for this video being a little more negative themed than usual. But please keep in mind that I do not hate any of these developers. In fact I think every one of you should go and support these developers as they deserve it. If you want an extremely good 5 nights at Wario's game to play I recommend playing 5 nights at Wario's The Abandoned Factory Gears of Entropy. That game is extremely hard but it is also very well balanced. You are actually watching gameplay of it right now. I will have a link in the description to play it. I also want to thank Wario851 Studios for giving me ideas for the thumbnail. Now I hope you have a good day and I'll see you again in a month or two. Goodbye.